apparently I'm muted for some reason. Great, awesome, like actually live on YouTube for once. Uh, welcome back, folks. I'm back from uh, from Dallas. Uh, been to Dallas uh, recently. Kind of interesting uh, to check that out for sure. Uh, went to uh, the Tech Expo in uh, Dallas-Fort Worth area, uh, area for my day job. It was actually a pretty fun trip. I uh, got to uh, hang out with uh, some uh, cool dudes, uh, some dope engineers, and talk about backup and replication and data protection for people. And uh, all of a sudden it's like, yo, uh, there, where's C.S. Joseph? And uh, yeah, that's where I've been. Also, I've been kind of nursing myself back to health, a little bit injured these days, and uh, I happen to uh, like not be, um, well, I'm on the mend, basically, but uh, honestly, uh, for those of you that would ask like what happened to me, because like the entire uh, right side of my body is, uh, well, it's, it's red, and in some areas, very raw, and that's because I learned that jump bikes uh, do not mix with train tracks. And uh, I took a bit of a fall and just kind of skidded across the asphalt a little bit and uh, lost some chunks of flesh in the process, which is why CSJ has not exactly been around at all. Oh, and that plus like I've been filming uh, lectures and there's another one that's about to post very soon. I believe it's already available on early access. It should be or it should be tomorrow for Patreon, but it's definitely going up very soon. Uh, gonna be uh, rapid releasing content, but uh, you know, it is what it is, so awesome. Uh, so yeah, uh, thank you all uh, for uh, coming in and visiting us tonight. And yeah, uh, jump bikes do not mix with uh, train tracks. It's It's kind of like, it's it, it's kind of rough. It's it's really not exactly uh, the best thing in the world, if you know what I mean. So, um, happy birthday. Uh, it's it's not my birthday, but fair enough. Thanks. <laughs> uh, no, it's not my birthday. I promise. Like not like seriously, it's not my birthday. No, no, I I very much promise. Uh, it is not my birthday. Yeah, I almost decided to, like, not stream tonight, but then I was like, mm, yeah, well, I can't let the audience down and uh, definitely need to uh, make sure that uh, keeping my leg propped up. So that's kind of why I'm sitting in this, like, weird position right now. It's because I got my leg kind of elevated because I got, like, bandages going up and down my leg, which they got to get uh, switched out anyway. So, and yes, Stellar Memer is correct. I am an Aquarius. And that's where I'm going to uh, leave it at that. Um, I am now, wait a minute, Stellar Memer, is it the Aquarius according to the old calendar or the new calendar, right? So, I mean, there's like a lot of different uh, calendars, etc. So, anyway, um, awesome. Uh, for some reason, I don't have any co-hosts tonight, so I'm just gonna kind of make it up as I go here. Um, I'm gonna get my, see if I can get my Discord uh, adjusted appropriately. Let's see here. That way I can kind of see it on the screen without getting in anyone's way. Trying to, uh, ISTPs please fix his leg. I mean, good luck trying to convince ISTPs to actually go to the hospital themselves. That might like actually be a useful uh, thing, but uh, will that happen? Probably not. <laughs> Hashtag stubborn AF, lol. Although, to be fair, so like what happened was is that I was on a date, I was on a date with Railgun, and uh, we were in downtown Sacramento on jump bikes, which are these awesome electric bikes uh, used by, um, you know, sold by Uber and whatnot. And you get an app on your phone, you can get on this electric bike that that thing can haul. It's like 25 miles an hour. That thing can really haul. It's it amazing. And uh, me and Railgun, we went out for Poke Bowls, uh, which are good. Uh, I do like sushi. And um, definitely some plenty of good options, including vegan ones. And, uh, and then uh, we also went to a local bar, had ourselves some, uh, some uh, Sierra Nevada cider, uh, which was also excellent. And then on the way back uh, out, uh, I decided to uh, experiment with not jump bikes uh, mixed with uh, train tracks. And I found out that they, in fact, do not 
<laughs> so kind of like not exactly uh, appropriate. And Richter Atmosphere already got a super chat in for the CSJ team fund. Thanks, bro. Much appreciated. Uh, a couple of announcements though before we get uh, started tonight. Cause, like I should probably like actually have a show right now. Um, so uh, and and no, this is not uh, a pre-recorded thing. Um, so, but uh, quite honestly, a couple of announcements. Um, how to social engineer ISFPs is going to be releasing. We're also going to have episode five of season seventeen dropping here pretty soon as well. Uh, we're going to have a Patreon private lecture dropping this Friday. Uh, which is going to be episode two for season 19. And we're also going to be probably starting the season for seduction styles either the following week or the first week of uh, August as well. That's coming out. Uh, so the content's going to keep flowing again. Uh, I've been super, super mega busy with my uh, with my day job, but uh, you know the summer is coming to the clo to a close uh, very soon. Uh, so then I'm going to have a lot more flexibility and a lot more time to produce content. And uh, the team and I have also been working on additional content as well. Uh, and I know I was supposed to make other announcements, but uh, I kind of forgot what those are. And I'm really hoping my team texts me on my phone exactly what it is I should be saying, just in case. So anyway, let's get down to business. This is how to type, uh, where you folks uh, choose what I should be typing uh, this evening. So let's uh, definitely get down to it. Um, if uh, so, to give you guys, <laughs> To give you guys uh, an opportunity uh, to uh, choose, um, let's talk about the format. The format is Super Chats. If no one Super Chats me, then I get to choose who we're typing this evening. But uh, if you guys Super Chat, uh, when a Super Chat comes in, I will uh, definitely take a look and I'll be keeping a running tally as to uh, which uh, Super Chat is the highest, whatever highest Super Chat we have uh, within, uh, within the one hour window that we're doing the show. Uh, that's the one that we're typing. If uh, we're not able to uh, finish them all, well, it's it's too bad. It's so sad. Sorry. Be wise with your super tats and just remember that we generally try to keep these shows about 60 minutes long. Uh, sometimes we go to 90 minutes on special nights. I know for tonight specifically because I need my bandages changed soon. Uh, definitely going to be a 16 uh, a 60 60 uh, minute episode tonight. So definitely, if you guys want to super chat in so that we can uh, do some typing, that's great. Otherwise, I'm going to be choosing who we're typing this evening. So we'll uh, figure that out. And apparently, I'm a centrist. Okay, awesome. No, we have not done Frank James yet. We have not done Frank James at all. Um, so we have not done Frank James. And I kind of actually would like to... Uh, oh, those texts came in that I was hoping for. Awesome. Um, so, okay. Okay, so starting tomorrow, uh, my team just chimed in here. Starting tomorrow, we're going to be releasing uh, our new 16 personality type names as well as icons. Um, and uh, they are starting tomorrow. Uh, we're gonna have some pretty, I got a pretty cool list of names here. I think they're being informative and telling me I should say some of the names at least. Like the ESTP type is the, uh, we're gonna be calling them the gladiator. You know what I'm saying? Or the uh, ISTP, they're the artificer, right? INFJ, you know, the paladin. And, um, ooh, ISFP druid, that's dope. INFP mystic, and so on and so forth. If you guys want to find out the rest of the names and the really cool icons that we're going to be releasing, and we're going to be utilizing these uh, titles and names and terminology with the rest of our comment, uh, content moving forward after they're all released, uh, that'll be available on our social media. If you guys are not already following us on uh, Instagram, you probably should. So that's at cs.joseph. Like, please follow us. You can get in on all that. Or like, go to Facebook and check us out. If you guys don't know where that is, csjoseph.life forward slash social. Um, and uh, they're apparently in the Discord already. So thank you very much for the text messages. I appreciate that. So cool. Uh, I'm going to check Super Chats. If uh, nothing's in, then uh, we're going to choose who I want to type here. So awesome. Cool. It's uh, apparently it's Chase's turn to type. So we're going to type none other than, oh, hold on. Russell Brunson. Oh, I can already tell you what type that guy is. <laughs> All right. We got a first super chat. So uh, definitely, uh, definitely going to do um, type host Eric. Well, I mean, give me a super chat. I'll type host Eric for you. 
But first one's up is Russell Brunson. So we're going to do Russell Brunson. Awesome. Russell Brunson. Cool. And uh, okay. Russell Brunson is a famous dude. Uh, he owns ClickFunnels, a uh, really cool dude at marketing. Uh, I already uh, I already know what type he is, but uh, I may as well go through the uh, process with you folks. Uh, all right, so interview. Let's get an interview with him right here. Yes, yeah, so I'll be getting YouTube Red to get rid of the ads. Don't worry. Um, interviews, Russell Brunson of ClickFunnels. That'll be interesting. Let's get some Ty Lopez in there too. All right. Russell Brunson, author of this book, but that's not what his main claim to fame is, as much as I love books. His main claim to fame is building ClickFunnels. Three years ago, it was at zero dollars. Now it's done, up, it's doing a hundred wow, million thank you, dollars. Wow, child. And it's got 55,000 clients paying. So for all of you who, by the way, I'm gonna give away cash and this little iPad mini four. Oh, hey, by the way, guys, at csjoseph.life, I believe the team has posted everyone that we've typed so far, and it's like actually available on our website. So if you go to our website, you can actually see who we've typed. So that way you're like not doubling up on super chats and whatnot. Like we have that list there. So go to csjoseph.life, check out that list. You guys should like be good to go on that. So anyway. 128 gigs. So let's keep going. Because we're talking about four secrets that you need to know. Five secrets, actually. So let's let before we get five secrets. Gosh, he's so initiating in that. So like, gonna definitely uh, put uh, initiating down for uh, Mr. Uh, Russell Brunson, of course, um, on that. Cool. Too far into the secrets. I just want to ask you something. By the way, let me do my introduction, just so they can cut this in. Welcome to the Ty Lopez Show. <laughs> all right, that's all we have to do. They'll cut the rest. Out. <laughs> uh, so. Russell, take me back. Three years ago, you decide to launch this company called ClickFunnels, which is, are you? He looks like an ISTP. Okay, Leanne, you gotta tell me, why does Russell Brunson look like an ISTP? Like why? Like seriously, well, why does he look like it? Please, please tell me. I, I'm very interested in knowing like your opinion on this, land uh, while I hit the play button again. Are you now number two, I mean, number one competitor with Shopify? I think so, I don't know else is even close, so pretty sure. And you did this, you have five kids. I think so. That's probably not really close. So I'm pretty sure that's a TIFE statement if I've ever heard one. So he's definitely a TIFE user. So we've got TIFE and initiating. It's, <laughs> you live in Idaho. For all of you who live in smaller markets and you don't Still think you works. can make any money. Wow, look at him moving around like a madman there. Definitely going to put him down for movement uh, on that one as well. Just how he's shaking around. Um, you probably can. Russell is living proof. So what was the feeling to go from zero and three years later? Do you think Ty Lopez like, like rented this I, house or does he actually own it? That was never the goal. What do you think? I mean, the goal is to like try to you know, do whatever. But it's funny because about four years ago when we had the idea and we're like, okay, can we do this? Like a lot of people tried it before. I had tried it before. Yeah. Um, luckily I had a, a co-founder named Todd Dickerson who was technically- I had tried it before. And he spent about a year building it and then it came back and it was just amazing. And so I'm like, all right, let's, let's sell this. And so. That's my job to be the guy selling it, talking about it, and trying to, to build the, the excitement behind it. And um, it's crazy because it took off. And at first it was kind of slow. It took a while to figure out like how to sell and how to get people excited about it. And then when it started working and then started getting success stories, people having success with it more and started growing and growing. And, and yeah, the last three years has been, has been nuts. Crazy. We never, it's funny because like as a company grows. Oh, it's funny. Gosh, he like, he just initiates again. Like he initiated like two additional points without even finishing a sentence. It's definitely movement form of initiating movement. So he's a starter type. Starter type, he keeps spitting facts out. He's not really talking about money at all. It's T I F E, etc. Let's keep going. I was, I, I'm sure you're the same way. It, at the very beginning, you're like, you feel like you have problems, but then as you get bigger, you're like, oh, wait, more money, the problems will go away. But the problems get bigger and they get different. Right. And they yeah, get more because exciting. new levels, it's like, it's been new a, devils. It's been a whirlwind the last three years. <laughs> so let's go through this. Marketing because a lot of people skip ahead. do whatever it is I want to do. And they, so they people have an idea, it, you're no longer constrained by technology. Yeah. You know that it cost Jeff Bezos back in 1990. Hey, I wouldn't exactly put it past Ty Lopez to break in, just saying. When he launched Amazon to build a website, the going rate with programmers. Remember, guys, highest value super chat is the one that gets priority for the next uh, typing, FYI. Highest value. So technology bought was $100,000. 
to get a website up. Now you're <laughs> saying with ClickFunnels or Shopify or any of these, we're not, this is by the way, survival flashlights, because this is like the cool new thing. So they put like survival flashlight and they launched the survival flashlight. It was like funnel like eight or nine. And this is the cool new thing, okay? All right, cool new thing. I've heard cool new thing before. That's an NE statement, cool new thing. Nine in this, in this thing, right? Launches that flashlight funnel and in like a two month period of time, there's $20 million selling these survival flashlights. Two months? I had no idea. It's the biggest funnel we've ever, I've wow. ever seen in my entire life. Like blew up um, and just went, went crazy. And so it's like, but he could have, done the, like for me, before we had click funnels, it took us on average about three months. I had eight full time developers and designers. It takes three months to get one funnel live, right? Yeah. And so, and we would do, so we do about one every single quarter, so four a year. And usually one out of four would work. So three out of four would completely fail. So like one a year, we're hoping for a home run, they'll pay for the rest of the year. With Trey, like he was doing one a week. Like now in, in our team, we always, we spend a lot of time thinking about the idea and then we actually sit down to build it. We usually get done within an hour to an hour and a half, the whole entire thing. So you so can go like from idea so fast. So people are watching, because I feel like people get stuck still. People are still in the old, Thanks, old Jay Patel. of business, which is think the thing through, write an elaborate business plan, <laughs> raise capital, hire if you don't. Wow, someone Click tell the funnels. ENFP to you stop also talking. Have the ability to use Facebook Please stop talking, Ty. On Facebook ads to sell one copy of the book. If someone buys the book, we have an upsell for the audio book, and there's a training program behind it. Okay, so he's very systematic. He's talking about the selling process right there. Very systematic. Uh, and uh, and uh, walking through that, he's also being abstract. So let's watch a little bit more about that. The book free? Uh, it's free. They cover shipping and handling. Okay. And then you have a couple upgrades? Yep. It's, it's free. It covers shipping and handling. said that very candidly. It's a TIFE statement as well. Average, we send twelve dollars to sell a book, but I make, but I make thirty-two dollars in the funnel. Hmm. So everyone buys the book, I net twenty dollars, it goes in my pocket, and I get a customer, and I tell a customer, "Hey, there's a really cool thing over here, thing called ClickFunnels," and hmm. then they go to ClickFunnels. So I explained to the VC guy, and he's like, "That doesn't make any sense." I said, "Yeah, I get paid twenty dollars net to introduce someone to my company," hmm. and he and I had explained it three or four times, and I remember the the, the fourth time afterwards, he said. If that's true, like that'll change. And business. I remember the fourth time afterwards, that's another SI statement. So it's S-I-N-E. So he's definitely SFJ NTP Quadra. Uh, Russell Brunson is SFJ NTP Quadra. Still very systematic. Uh, not really seeing so much on the affiliative side of things, uh, but I want to see a little bit more uh, from him before we could like, hey, yo. Um, this forever, right? I said, that's exactly what my whole message is. Like these funnels make it so that people like me who don't have any money, I don't have to go. Oh yeah. Oh folks, we're joined by Wonka Vision this evening. Wonka Vision uh, took uh, top critic of uh, CS Joseph, uh, took it away from Dolph Dervish. Uh, poor Dolph. I'm sure Dolph Dervish regrets that. But uh, thank you for uh, joining us, Wonka Vision, as our number one uh, critic uh, within the community. We really appreciate your presence. You know, get some venture capitalists got to give me ten million dollars, hundred million dollars to bank. Hey, thanks. Not the droid you're looking for. Uh, much appreciated for the uh, uh, donation. Also, uh, Jeff Galia or Galia or Galia. Uh, I am not a god. I am not that cool. Uh, so, uh, definitely not that cool. Uh, but thank you. Bankroll and finance the growth. Like I create a funnel providing value to people. It gives me customers, and then I introduce them to my the thing I'm really selling. Yeah. And it's all free, and that's how. That's and then how you we told them, and get out. Yeah, and then get out. Like, I don't need your You're dirty out. money, you <laughs> VC capitalist. Okay, so we just explained that whole process again, but it was a bunch of what if statements. So let's go back and do it again. Funnels, and mm -hmm. then they go to click funnels. So I explained to the VC guy, and he's like, "That doesn't make any sense." I said, "Yeah, I get paid twenty dollars net to introduce someone to my company." Hmm. And he and I had explained it three or four times, and I remember the the, the fourth time afterwards, he said. If that's true, like that'll change business. If that's forever. true, I said that's exactly what my whole message is. Selling like, pitch. Hey, you're gonna so want to do this. Like me, this is a possibility. Money, you need to consider. To go, you know, get so that is abstract. Not really seeing uh, anything affiliative at all. I'm just really not seeing that, and also not seeing too much in the it's pragmatic side. venture capital's got to give me ten million dollars. See a little bit more pragmatic. Bankroll and finance. Let's skip ahead. Like, I can create a fund. So the weight loss from the external could be like, well, I know I can do this diet plan, but. My wife, she always buys all this junk food and the kids have candy. Yeah, okay, can't all right, that, so he's right? abstracting yeah. right now. Really he's giving a scenario. He's like, that's, the, that's the external for something like that. For a particular customer. How, how, how do you break that one? Um, so again, leave your wife. 
Yeah, leave it. No, it's like get your get your family involved. Like make this part of the whole thing. Like the family yes. diets together. Like they have success. And anyway, but you know, for Kaylin who runs Lady Boss, like it's her story. It's like what was? So I come back to her and it's like, why do you believe this is the right product? Yeah. There's a reason why you started this company. Like tell that story. And then it's like, you tried other things before you came into this. Like, All right, so the interviewer is Ty Lopez. He's an ENFP. We've, we've identified his type a long time ago. That's Ty Lopez. He also has like a, a reputation for being that guy to rent uh, fancy cars and fancy houses and make it look like he's rich and sell his products, uh, thinking that other people will become rich as a result of his products, etc. Tell the story about other stuff you tried and why this worked. Boom, knocks down that false belief. And it's like, now, you didn't lose weight the very first time you tried it. What were your fears? Like, what kept you from doing it personally? And how did you break that? Tell that story. So tell that story, and all of a sudden the next one falls down. And it's like, now what are the external things you blamed it on? Like, I can't do it because of why. I can't do it because of why. Again, more abstraction. Uh, so, I did not want to open that. We're going to close that. Go back in here. Going for abstract. So, yeah, anyway, just based on what we have, form initiating movement, abstract, systematic. Russell Brunson is an ENTP, so we're calling it there. Awesome. Pretty cool. Uh, good old Russell Brunson. If you haven't read his books, Dot Com Secrets or Expert Secrets, What Are You Doing With Your Life? If you aspire to like actually have any skill in life, marketing is a skill that you need to learn, so I suggest you study Russell Brunson immediately. It is exquisite. Him and Gary Vaynerchuk can at least give you a decent foundation uh, for skills uh, that you can utilize. So, but yeah. Uh, pretty awesome right there. All right, gonna be checking the uh, the list right now for the super chats that have come in. Let's see. Uh, today, today. Okay, so at twenty four ninety nine, we have a uh, Colloy Noir interview with Bill Maher. All right, so uh, Bill Maher, it is. Uh, <sighs> And uh, it's real time with Bill Maher on HBO. Awesome. But first up, he's an attorney and the provocative gun rights enthusiast who hosts NRA TV's Noir, Colian Noir, right over here. <laughs> Sir, how are you? Great to see you. Absolutely, pleasure's all mine. I have seen your videos many times. You're very good at what you do. Yeah, Eric is not an ENTP. So LOL, and for him to even remotely look like an ENTP, he's got to take a bong hit for that because hashtag extrovert intuition is not within the top four uh, functions of my mind. So I need to have that marijuana, yo. That way I could be like, yo, I can like sound and look like an ENTP, even though he doesn't even look like one. Oh, thank you. I am I am not a gun lover. Okay. Now, if I say the the term gun nut, I hope you realize that is not an insult. I don't take it as one. Good. I, I don't, don't mean not like. I don't take it as one. I don't. I don't take that as a. You know, seems a. Uh, seems very direct in his response. Ooh, it helps if I wouldn't like erase everything all of a sudden. So let's see. Let's put his name up here. So, Colleen Noah. Awesome. I mean, like something you really love to do. Yeah, I'm incredibly passionate about right. it. Right. So I'm a drug nut. <laughs> I'm incredibly passionate about this. Seems very initiating. Very, very initiating. So you said. Yeah, I, I mean a pot nut, not all drugs. Just the ones I can get my hands on. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. So, uh, but when I watch your videos, you know, I, I very often, you know. I wow, is he affiliative? Because of his like Jesus response there? Wow, I'm gonna have to put one down for affiliative with that response. Interesting the end you kind of have a smirk like I laid it out and you know what you kind of earn your smirk because people like me who don't really like guns mm -hmm. we don't know much about guns and, and the theme with you really wait a minute did Bill Maher just say hey people like us who don't like guns typically don't really know anything about guns so wait a minute so is he literally admitting publicly that people are ignorant and have their heads in the sand uh, when they don't like something, then they don't know anything about it? Wait a minute, aren't you supposed to like know everything about something but first before you make a judgment about it? No, wait, we can't do that, right? We can't do that, uh, LOL, Bill Maher, come on, like seriously. Really, I think is like, it's annoying, isn't it, that people like who talk about guns and don't know about guns yeah. 
<laughs> are, not, are not restrained by their lack of knowledge. What are the misconceptions that bother you the most? Well, there, there are two dynamics, right? There's the actual physical component of the gun and then the individuals, as we've termed, gun nuts, right? So there's that right. aspect of, say, for instance, semi-automatic, right? Yeah. Tell me about that. The vast majority of guns, almost all of them are semi-automatic. Almost all guns, right. I exactly. heard you say that. that I didn't know that. See, yeah. I didn't know that. And so that's and stuff yeah, you would so learn after you follow guns. the rabbit down the hole. So to speak. And semiotic meaning you have to pull the trigger. Well, you pull every the trigger once, you get one bullet. Right. And or that's all gun, almost all guns. Pretty much, yes. Not it's just the they they seem to be obsessed with the AR-15. Yes. So what the, the AR does not stand for assault rifle. That's a common misconception. Right. The AR stands for Armalite rifle, which is the name right. of the actual rifle. And it's a semi-automatic rifle in the sense that you pull the trigger once, you get one, you get one round. So why, why do people think very TIFE, very educational approach, just spitting out facts over and over and over? He may actually be informative instead of direct, but we'll see. Uh, we'll definitely take a look at that. So far, I'm going to say concrete, but I want to have some more proof of that first. Uh, liberals, let's mm -hmm. be honest, why did they think that getting rid of the AR-15 would go so far to solving this problem, and tell me why it wouldn't. Um, you know, as the saying goes, optics is everything, right? Right. There's a certain theatrics that comes with, with, with guns in general, right? Especially when you start thinking, talking about things like they are. There's a certain uh, theatrics that comes with guns in general. That's a FE statement. So, uh... AR-15. With AR-15, you see it, it's big. You usually, most people who aren't too familiar with guns, they usually know about them by way of movies. So you see the movies with all the bad guys spraying and praying, doing all these crazy things with the firearms, and then you see that in reality, and you're like, oh my god, I don't want those anywhere near me or on the streets. And so what ends up happening is... Yes, I used to produce Kushna Pups, kushnapup.com, K-U-S-H-N-A-P-U-P. Uh, yes, I used to be an arms dealer and manufacturer, and like I can even produce uh, my old uh, class one and class seven licenses to prove the fact that I used to be. Uh, and yes, we sold uh, bullpup shotguns, absolute minimum legal length. Uh, they were amazing. Uh, Twenty round drums on those suckers, and one of our biggest customers happened to be um, uh, officers of the law working for the Seattle Police Department. It was the dopest. As they take that and then they see it, and it's like, well. They don't know much. The knowledge base is not very high. So what they end up doing is they start feeling, right? Because it evokes a feeling. There's a, the theatrics behind it. They're loud. There's a muzzle flash. You know, all of those things. And it Which can be scary. Which the movies we like. I'm going to definitely have to put down for extroverted sensing uh, so far. Um, we'll see how that goes. Uh, not talking about the what if. Uh, not really speaking from his own experience. He's talking about other people's experience. But let's keep going. Exactly. There is a lot of hypocrisy there. If yes. guns weren't so popular, why do they dominate movies as much as they do? Because there's there's a fascination People there too. Like, yeah. yeah, it's kind of like going to an amusement park, right? So, and that's what I say it to gun nuts. Like, just be honest and admit mm -hmm. that you love guns, and it's sort of a vice in that, like, you know, gambling, alcohol, drugs. I these disagree. are all things that have some collateral damage that I am willing uh, to live with because you can't tell me that I can't smoke pot because some people will be hurt by it. Mm. You know, you can't organize society around what some people might do or be hurt by Absolutely. completely. Yeah. So you would admit that. You just like guns. You like holding them. You want to have sex with them. Well, it's, it's, no, <laughs> <you don't like. laughs> it's multifaceted, right? So there's an element of recreation there. There's an element of sport there. There's an element of protection there, right? And then there's an element of philosophy with regard to what this country was founded on. So it's incredibly multifaceted. So what ends up happening is just a lot of people who don't really know much about firearms have a very myopic view of them. And the only lens that they see them through is the, the, are the bad things that are done by bad people. I feel like it's self-reliance a lot, too. Constantly going with what is. I'm not really saying much what if statements. Uh, so I'm going to have to put down for concrete. There's a lot of concrete statements in the last exchange for this guy. So, wow. Uh, and it kind of seems a little systematic. We might have an SJ on our hands, which would be interesting. Uh, he's, although he could be kind of transitioning uh, into like a, like a NTP subconscious if he's an SFJ, so absolutely, isn't that what you feel? I get that from your videos. Well, you, it's it's self reliance based on reality, right? That you you don't trust the cops. Self reliance based on reality. That is a concrete statement, and uh, I can actually make an I can make an argument for control, but uh, seems to be. Partially responding, not sure though. Sure, so. it's not that I don't trust. And if them, they do, so they might shoot you. 
there's always there's, there's a possibility for everything, right? Right. Um, but there's a possibility for everything. That's a nice S I N E statement. Interesting. It's not my main concern. My main concern is that in the in the moment, right? Whenever something arises where I may have to defend my life, I wouldn't be in a position to do absolutely anything possible I can to make it out of there alive along with the people I love and anybody else who seems to be around that I can. That's also a very S-I-N-E statement as well. That was very S-I-N-E, talking about protecting others. We're gonna add another one for concrete. It's also affiliative because he's focusing on doing the right thing, not necessarily what's pragmatic. Definitely concrete and affiliative. So this guy is definitely an S-J for sure. Uh, definitely an S-J, uh, just from a temperament analysis point of view. So let's keep going. What kind of SJ is he though? That's that's the issue. So looking like definitely an SFJ. So which SFJ is this guy? Is this guy an ISFJ or an ESFJ? Hmm. Let's find out. Care about right. But the, I had Killer Mike here mm -hmm. about a month ago, who was on your show and yeah. got in a lot of trouble for talking about guns. No, he got a lot of trouble for just being on my show. Just for just being on the show, yeah. right. But you guys made some interesting points about how it's very easy for people who live in safe neighborhoods <laughs> to talk about gun control. It's yeah. a whole different story for some other folks who don't have that luxury. Yeah, I, I think one of the things that ends up happening when we start talking about some of the gun control measures that people are pushing is how they disproportionately affect people who are in lower economic environments and in environments that have a higher Ooh, level disproportionately affect right? uh, and so, like lower income before, people I can live in a gate affiliate have a security guard outside I'm gonna be, feel relatively safe even then something could still happen but if say for instance I'm a single parent mother definitely and I live informative in a city somewhere and I'm working two jobs and I can't afford a car and I have to walk late at night and when I get off work at night and walk back home it's an any statement talking about I'm the possibilities with my kids in an environment where there are home invasions right I, as a woman in that, particular, in that particular situation, and just anyone, I don't want me protecting my life to be a competition. I want it to be as lopsided as possible because I'm not the one threatening someone's life. I'm, going I'm not the one life, threatening so someone's life. It's an SI so I'm statement. It's also affiliative to guard against that. and right. concrete. And I am sympathetic to the argument that if you're in a horrible situation, it would be a, a good thing if a good guy had a gun. Absolutely. And we've seen many times, and I know you think that they don't report while it seems like he's very initiating guys, I really think it's a cognitive transition. I think he's like doing like a, an ENTP subconscious transition, uh, trying to take a more of an educational approach, uh, a very intellectual approach to it while maintaining that he is actually concrete. And uh, definitely is dressed like an NISE user uh, because you know all black is that's what we like to do. We like uh, SINE users like to wear dark colors more than the other types for the most part, especially especially uh, SFJ, NTP, Quadra, uh, typically. But uh, definitely affiliative, definitely concrete, but he's always on point with everything Bill Maher is saying. So I'm going to put a point down for responding. He seems very outcome focused, I'm not really seeing so much movement. So there's a good chance he's actually behind the scenes here. So let's keep looking. Report it. I don't think they reported enough in comparison uh, to. Right. Yeah. But my question is, where does that lead? We can't go back to the old west where we're all strapped all the time. Yeah, so Bill Maher keeps initiating over and over again because Bill Maher is direct initiating control. But you know, uh, Colin, for example, it's just he's just responding. He's constantly responding. He's not initiating any new points. It's always within the context of what Bill Maher is asking, right? The time. But we are. Well, I'm not. <laughs> Ooh, he's like, well, we are. That's a nice TI uh, inflection there. And I'm sure there are guns somewhere around here. I hope so. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. yeah. But not everybody. Because everybody can't do it. I mean, you don't really want teachers themselves to have guns, do you? I honestly don't have a problem with arming teachers. But teachers aren't there well, to there, be, There's a contingency. There's a contingency there. This is where the NRA loses me. I mean, they lose me. <laughs> they lose me in a lot of places. Mm -hmm. But but a place like that, that, that does seem unreasonable. I, I can understand a guard at a school, and I think... Yeah, that seems unreasonable, Bill Maher, because, like, you're affiliative, direct initiating control, and a TE user, so basically you're an ESTJ, and it's like, ah, it's not unreasonable. If the Parkland guard 
who didn't do his job had done his job, we would be having a different... If I wasn't such a sellout, I might actually have more viewers. With respect to this conversation, one of the biggest issues that I've seen is that... With respect to this conversation, one of the issues I have seen, one of the issues I have experienced is NISE, with respect to this conversation, is responding. Definitely more control. So there you guys, there you have it. Colin Noir is definitely an ISFJ. So uh, that's pretty awesome. Let's move on to the next one. I'm going to look in the list here as soon as I erase uh, the red. So uh, remember, folks, uh, honoring the highest bid of the Super Chats. Uh, this is going to be about a 60-minute long episode. So if you get a Super Chat in, uh, then uh, they'll not, uh, yours could might get stifled by the higher cost. I think the highest uh, price right now is $35. Uh, which I believe I think was put in by Standard Oil, uh, Mr. Standard Oil. So we'll get a, uh, a look at that. So I don't know if Bill Maher is an ESTJ for sure. I'm only guessing when I say that. Looks like one on the, like initially, but I'd actually like have to care to uh, verify that. Uh, so all right, uh, the full 1975 Harris interview, Beatles breakup, reunion, John Lennon, Standard Oil has asked for John Lennon. Uh, the next one after that is uh, um, Alf's Void uh, as well, so by Meta S. So Standard Oil is John Lennon is next. We've not done John Lennon before, uh, so we're definitely doing John Lennon now. Uh, so let's put it up here, John Lennon. Cool. 1975 uh, interview. Uh, Don Lennon at the Tomorrow Show. All right, cool. I'm creating my Wix site. And you I think you am not going to pay any attention to this ad whatsoever. But no worries. We'll get that handled next time. We'll have ad for YouTube next time. Gone through the Beatlemania thing. Nowadays, it's nothing like that. I mean, I can walk down the street and somebody will say, oh, hi, John. And they usually say, how's your immigration? You know, if it's in New York, right? And they don't hassle me. I might sign one autograph, two autographs, you know? And I don't get hassled. And I went through that period where I actually couldn't go anywhere. Ooh, and so that's now S -I -N -E. it's like, hey, I can go and eat. We go and eat. So we go to the movies. We go wherever we want. John Lennon was walking down a street on the west side of New York last night between 10 and 11 o'clock Eastern time when he was shot down by an assailant. He is dead tonight in a senseless and terrible, terrible moment. The interview that you just saw, the portion of the interview, was first recorded here in New York at the NBC studios during April of 1975 of the United States and at that time his attorney Mr. Leon Wilds will join us to make certain that John or I make no mistakes in the legalities but I welcome you here and I'm glad that you're here as I said at the outset uh, back in 19 people couldn't hear it that's that's why they didn't understand well, it. well that they brings up an interesting it, you know? point you know one could never understand the words until one sat down with the record album I went to a couple of person uh, of your personal appearances including one in I think in Philadelphia in 1965 in an outdoor location oh, yeah. and there were uh, there was so much screaming and so much carrying on and did that bother you at all when you were doing those concerts that people couldn't hear your music that they all they heard was, was themselves screaming it got a little boring. I mean, it was great when it first happened, when you'd come on, there'd just be nothing but wah, you know? But then we just became like lip syncing, you know, miming. And uh, we didn't, we almost, we, sometimes things would break down and nobody would know. Sometimes things would break down and nobody know. That's an F-I-T-E statement, for sure. Uh, definitely seems responding. Uh, definitely seems informative. Um, so far, I'd say control, but I'm not really sure, but I'm going to put a tick mark down for that as well. Um, and, uh, wow, he might actually be an INFP, which is what everyone claims he is, so let's see how this goes. And so it wasn't, <laughs> wasn't doing the music any good, you know? When you guys were in the dressing rooms after these concerts, or when you were in the dressing room after the Ed Sullivan show, where, my heavens, young people were just almost flinging themselves on stage, yeah. didn't you ever wonder, are these people crazy? Are we that good? Can we really produce this kind of reaction in people? Uh, we didn't think if, whether we're that good or not. You've got to think you're good to... to we never thought uh, that we were that good. Yeah, that's a TEFI statement. Some actual humility there. That's awesome. Do what we did, you know. Uh, it, was, it was like being in the eye of a hurricane. And so we never, there was never a time when you thought, you thought, what's going on? It's like well, being in the eye of a hurricane. Deep as it got. What is happening or what? 
you know, you never thought what was happening in the middle SINE of a statement? concert or a happening and think, what, what? How did I get here? You know, mm -hmm. the last thing I remember was playing music in a club, and the next minute this. But we never thought about it too much because it was an ongoing thing. It was happening to us, and it was hard to see. You know, we were just in the middle, being ushered from room to room. As I recall, there were fan clubs or 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 clubs of followers formed yeah. for each yeah. of the individuals in the organization. Well, it was mainly a Beatles club, but you know, they sort of fanned it out a little just to keep the... And I'm just sort of wondering how unified any group can be. And I'm not singling out the group that you belong to, the yeah. Beatles, but how unified can any group be when the audience has... Going forward and going somewhere, it didn't matter. But all of a sudden there just right, wasn't yeah. any further... Going forward and going somewhere, it didn't matter. It's an NE statement as well. So he, this guy is definitely STJ, NFP Quadra, for sure. STJ, NFP Quadra. So uh, let's let's start looking at uh, interaction styles and temperaments. Uh, not really seeing much with the pragmatic with him at all. Uh, seems pretty affiliative, uh, but uh, let's keep let's keep looking. Their progress. It was the same old same old over and over again. Yeah, saying? yeah. It just got like um, a marriage that doesn't work or something. Now there are some groups that are quite open in their advocacy in the music that they present. They advocate. Social justice. Uh, they call for an end to war. They they wish for a time. Yeah, but what kinds of messages? Just reporting on the state we were in, you know, looking back on it, and uh, we we made things like "All you need is love," you know, which is well, that's pretty was wholesome. our version. That's of, a pretty wholesome yeah, message. Yeah, isn't it? yeah, that's wholesome. Yeah, yeah, that's wholesome. That is interest based. Uh, so those. Um, those two statements were interest, so he's very interest oriented. So STJ, NFP, Quadra, uh, the only ones that are interest is ENFP or INFP. So that's the only things that he could possibly be. And uh, he's definitely responding. Uh, so he's, he's staying within the context of the, uh, of the uh, conversation. So based on that, John Lennon is an INFP. So there you go, folks. John Lennon is an INFP. And we will move on to the next one. Looks like Meta S has upgraded uh, their bid. Uh, so we're going to be going with uh, Meta S's as the uh, top bid right now at $35. Uh, so awesome. Let's uh, double check that with the feed. And let's see. Uh, Alf's Void. So S Void is. Oh, it's actually at $30 right now. So Alsvoid, so Meta S is top right now with Alsvoid, and then we have, um, let's see, Caitlin with Aubrey Plaza at 25 after that, and then uh, Cara Delavigne with uh, the Morgan Flies. So we're gonna be doing uh, Alsvoid now. We're gonna be pulling out some uh, rainbow ink for this one. Yeah, Alsvoid. I don't even know who that is. LOL. Let's find out. Alf's Void. A L F Alf's Void. I really hope there's actually like an interview here to look at. A supposedly fun live stream with Alf's Void. Okay, why not? We're live. And uh, we already have 10 upvotes. That's so low effort on Christian anymore. Um, I guess I'm not explicitly a Christian anymore, but due to my own upbringing, there was a very heavy price put upon, the eternal price put upon a, a certain belief system, and, and not adhering to a certain belief system um, mm -hmm. dictated that I'm on the wrong side of eternity, which means that I'll be in hell, because there's a right and a wrong side. Okay. Well, let's, let, I'll, I'll try one of the Q&As in a second. If you're in Good Place on Netflix... Yeah. Have you ever seen Good Plays on Netflix? Have you ever seen? That's an S-E and I statement. Have you ever seen? Cool. Whoops. Lost the thing there. Oh, we, I watched through it. Most of it. Yeah. 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 What did you think? Yeah, I, love, uh, I actually really enjoyed it. Yeah, I did. I mean, there was some, like, cliche, really extra political correctness inserted in there at huh. times. Huh. Like, with the... Like with the, when, I can't remember the one part where Columbus just enters randomly and he's like, I'm responsible for raping and pillaging. <laughs> and mm. it's like, what? Where does that come from? 
Yeah. But the other part is the new joke in my house between me and my sister is whenever one of us is like a little bit sassy or does something a little too extra. Uh, oh, she kind of comes off ENFJ to me, but who knows? Uh, the the <laughs> reply or rebuttal is you're going. That was initiating for sure um, on that, but she still may be responding, but let's find out. It's a bad place. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you'll you'll be on the wrong side of eternity then. Yeah, pretty much, in, in more or less words. And I really like the twist. Uh, I don't know if I can... Yeah, definitely direct. She is definitely direct, for sure. Um, choosing her role in the conversation. Give the, like, a major spoiler alert for anyone to plug their ears. Who hasn't okay. seen the... Can I do that? Is that acceptable? I guess we're, can, you... we're, we're... can I do that? Is that acceptable? Because, like, I'm affiliative. Can I do that? Is that acceptable? Affiliative? LOL? We're going to say trigger warning with regards to next Netflix series. So this is a spoiler warning. Plug your ears and then... Okay, I will put my hand like this and I will put it down when the spoiler is over, okay? I will put my hand up like this and I will put it down when the spoil is over. That is S-E-N-I. S-E-N-I. Using their hand in that way, in a physical uh, direction and way, etc. That is S-E-N-I. And it is also affiliative for the sake of the spoilers because I'm pragmatic and don't really care about spoiling content sometimes, even though every now and then I do a spoiler alert. LOL. I mean... Poe. Um, so... What what happened? Um, um, and she, she's worried. She's just thinking, is this something I want to keep on putting more and more uh, my attention into? And is it worth that if, like, the potential is is that I get fired or harassed and stuff like that? So that's kind of that's kind of the uh, the recap of that. Alfie, are are you? Still listening? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I, okay. I, I stopped the audio. I didn't hear the end, the, like the last okay. minute of it. Okay. Uh, so, so did she say in the audio? Like, so did she say in the audio? Did she say it's S E N I? Yeah. And uh, I'm gonna have to definitely say T I F E. So far, I haven't seen any F I T E. What her like? What specifically Meg Tao did? Like what? How? Like they outed her place of work. They they what? Well, the thing is, she she wants to. Basically, the thing is. Hey, I did actually say spoiler warning in that one, Caitlin. I actually did, like FYI. This is that uh, MGTOW, which is men going their own way. Somebody who ascribes to that uh, set of thoughts, which is something we can do, is something that is worth her time and energy when she just wants to be, basically. A, a better person and an engineer and a wife and a mother so that's mm. basically that's basically what she's saying so it wasn't it wasn't she wasn't shut down by anything but by uh responding and reassessing what she's up to with youtube um and there, there's certain things that we can tell talk about this guy about this starter um, type one just about up. your like i ha like when i had to deal with bullying it wasn't online it was to my face so if I had to deal with a bully, it was like, okay, I'll just stand here and have these people laugh at me. Well, I just stand here and deal with it. Hmm. It's not the same. Somebody, some entities on the internet uh, releasing information about me. It wasn't necessarily like that. that. So I don't that necessarily think it would be fair for me. Or I don't think there's a comparison really okay. to be made between how I would deal with it versus how Poe should there's deal not with a it. There's comparison. That's I, the like, I think statement. they're very different things here like this is okay online Very outing abstract. of personal details versus being terrorized yeah. as a child <laughs> it's like this is being yeah. terrorized as a child you know I mean? or maybe i'm missing some dimension of your question here well like, control, the question is is that uh, have you, you've received direct. some negative interaction on the internet like after you did a video a few months ago about another youtuber like you got you know rape threats or, or something along that like do you think that your experience as a kid is ridiculous uh like like i just mean like he just seems so so irrationally hateful so mm. so, so irrationally um, hateful judgmental TIV? so necessarily good TIV? reason like i can recognize some no of the reason insults TIV? about me i'm like am i a 10 out of 10 no but like you know what i mean i can i, I can, can recognize understand insults, where criticisms are coming from so I don't Direct. know. So when I look at people like that, it's like, it's like he like. All right, yeah, uh, that's good. To, that's good to go. So Asteroid is uh, definitely ENFJ. Asteroid is definitely ENFJ. Forgive me if I'm not saying her name appropriately. Definitely ENFJ. 
Let's look at the higher bidder. Okay, folks, remember we're running out of time. I'm gonna close Super Chats for right now. No more Super Chats. Uh, we got plenty of high bidders to go. Uh, so no more Super Chats, because uh, we're gonna be uh, coming uh, to the end of this show pretty soon. So uh, thank you all so far. Uh, I have my, my bandages have to be changed soon because I had an unfortunate accident involving jump bikes in Sacramento. Uh, mistakenly believing that jump bikes and train tracks mix and uh, my bandages need to be changed. Uh, thank goodness Railgun is here uh, to change my bandages uh, with me. I am very appreciative uh, for her assistance. Uh, she is definitely a very uh, lovely woman and I appreciate her uh, assistance uh, whenever possible. So let's see who's next. Okay. So it looks like it is Aubrey Plaza is next. Uh, Aubrey Plaza, awesome. And we're going to use uh, red for Aubrey Plaza. Nice. So let's see how that works out for us. Aubrey Plaza is next. This was Caitlin's pick, I believe. Aubrey Plaza. Pop. Okay, audition for Catwoman. Aubrey Plaza is really weird and awkward. I love it. Okay, let's watch that. Thanks, this is the best day of my life. I'm killing myself tomorrow. So. Where, where are you from originally? Uh, I'm from Wilmington, Delaware. Wilmington, Delaware. I don't, I don't know many people from Delaware. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> And when I was in the hospital, like, they kept asking me how old I was. And my older, much older boyfriend at the time uh, was there with me. And every time they asked me how old I was, I would go, 16. Which was the only number I could say, I don't know why. Um, and, uh, and he would go, she's not 16, she's 20. And they would go, how old are you? Okay, definitely T-I-F-E, for sure. Aubrey Plaza is definitely T-I-F-E. <laughs> and uh, I would have to say also informative as well. Uh, Yeah, it w well, I eventually talked, spoke, talked again. I'm talking. How, how, how long? Your Twitter handle is Evil Hag. Why Evil Hag? Because I like it. Um, I don't know, because why? <laughs> Sorry. Um. What? Wow, that's initiating. Very initiating, it seems, movement. Form initiating movement, starter type. She's probably an ENTP, let's be honest. <laughs> I feel like you're my daughter. If I'm gonna be in this movie, I'm gonna play the girl that has sex with Robert De Niro. Sure. Because that's what I want to do. Yeah. <laughs> so, with all due respect. Thanks for being here. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> T-I-F-E. Uh, she also had some S-I and E statements earlier talking about her past. Let's get her to talk no, about it more. No, welcome. yep is not the correct <laughs> response. Oh, oh, Thanks for being here. Yep. Uh, my mother has all my baby teeth in her underwear drawer. Yeah, and that's very pragmatic what? of you to say. Seriously? Yeah. She, has, she kept all your baby teeth, and, and she's put them in her underwear drawer. Yeah, she never told me that, but I found them there once. So now I know. Oh, so I found them there once, so now I know. is an S-I-N-E statement followed by a T-I-F-E statement. Definitely looking like S-F-J N-T-P quattro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I keep finding these bites all over my body, and I don't know where they're coming from. I spend most of my days wondering where these... Is that a shot? No, it's right there. It's right there. It's the, I mean, that's... Yeah, that's a bite. That's a... Uh, don't stop doing that. Stop doing that as she SI caresses it. <laughs> Hashtag don't get caressed. <laughs> shooting on Thursday but I was really where are you gonna shoot recently it? just Atlanta Georgia right. mm -hmm. and um, yeah yep pragmatic uh, and yeah so you know if and this doesn't fix it, I hope I don't get fired you're from Delaware you were just named Delaware's most famous person that means you and beat Joe Biden I know it was a yep. vote I don't it was like an online vote I don't Brain know movement. I don't I didn't ask for this I heard it I heard Initiating. Dr. Heimlich of the Heimlich maneuver yeah Henry Heimlich what's up I beat you <laughs> he saved millions of lives 
All right, all right. I, I've seen enough. So she's uh, SFJ, NTP Quadra, Informed Initiating Movement. If you're SFJ, NTP Quadra, you can only be ESFJ or ENTP at that point. And we know for a fact she's pragmatic. Ergo, she has to be an ENTP. So there you go, folks. Aubrey Plaza is an ENTP woman. Uh, fantastico, if I do say so myself. And um, let's get in another one. Let's look who's next on the list here. Uh, remember, Super Chats are closed, folks. Super Chats are closed. We're coming to the end of the show right now. And if you don't want to, I mean, I'll, I'll definitely take your money. But, like, if uh, you don't, well, I mean, it's probably, like, a bad idea for you to, like, give me money if you want me to type someone. And then, like, all of a sudden, like, I don't because we ran out of time. So, cool. All right. Um... Yes, I am looking in the mirror, uh, a female uh, mirror, female-shaped uh, mirror and whatnot. So, okay, let's see. Elf's boy, John Lennon. Um, who's next? Uh, okay, we did Russell Brunson. Highest, uh, next one on the highest is the Morgan Flies with uh, Cara Delevingne. So let's do that one, awesome. Cara de Lavinia interview. Cara or Cara? Um, full interview. Chelsea on Netflix. Okay, why not? In her new movie, Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets, my first guest proves she's not only a supermodel, but she can beat two grown men up. Take a look. Listen, I don't want to tell you guys how to do your jobs, but don't you think you should cuff me? Firstly, because it's protocol, but secondly, because I'm probably probably like an ENTJ. Well, let's see. I think that's my microphone, but that's fine. Oh yeah, I know. Something for you. There's yeah, her microphone. I I think that's like my microphone, but uh, I have something for you, uh, Essie and I, uh, to begin with. Um, so we'll uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, it popped out of the back of her butt because there's not really room butt. for anything yeah. back there. I'm so glad we didn't wear the same thing because our bodies are so similar. Um, <laughs> yeah, no. What happened to Apart your? From, I feel like the icons on just for our nipples to be on show. Well, you're. But the thing is, with you, you're not you're not wearing a bra, right? No. Right, I can't do that. You could. Well, I could. It would be more distracting. I feel like you're doing it for us so that, you know, we can keep focus. Well, that's nice of you to think that. You could. That's so, like, uh, initiating. <laughs> Very initiating. And that I'm worried about my audience, but what I'm actually more worried about <laughs> is actually injuring somebody. Because if these were to or come yourself. out, or myself, yeah. like I can't go for a run or something without two sports bras. Yeah. And what do you? Yeah. Do you have to wear one sports bra or just none? I none? Just let them. I like the breeze. You know, they need air. It's nice to let them free and wild. Young, wild, and free. Do yeah? you? Young, wild, and free. And talking about your breasts in that regard is a very pragmatic approach, and definitely initiating as well. Do you go for runs, though? No. <laughs> I don't like running. It's bad for my knees. I have bad joints. I yeah, that's person. a great answer. I, yeah. I like walking. I like walking and uh, strolling. Long skipping. walks. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I got you, girl. Cantering. Cantering. Yeah. Wow. Galloping. <laughs> you know, feel like an animal that I am. So what happened to your hair? Did you get lice? <laughs> Funnily enough, actually, it was crabs first, and then it all kind of... Oh, I didn't, you know, I didn't know you could get crabs in your head. Well, they are the same thing. It's just one falls into the other, and vice versa. I do handstands a lot, so that's kind of... Right, thing. right. What was the decision behind cutting your hair? I think it's... So, for... It was for a movie. It was for a role. I would have never had the uh, guts to do it unless it had been for, for an acting role. I think it's badass when women shave their heads and can still get away with a shirt. Movies I've done around eight, but, the, you know, any role that I got when I was younger, you know, my first roles I got, I was, they were non-speaking, which I loved, because I was kind of, I just got to sit and not watch and learn, and that's how I kind of learned my craft, I guess. I got to sit and watch and learn. Um, that's how I learned my craft, I guess. Uh, very interesting uh, approach, but uh, systematic, uh, definitely systematic on that. 
Um, and uh, not really seeing anything informative uh, from her. She seems definitely direct. So. This is definitely my first big, my big film. Yeah. Well, you're the star of the film. You, I mean, this is a Luc Besson one. film. Who did The Professional? He did uh, that Mila Jovovich movie. You see the Fifth Element. It yeah. was my favorite movie growing up, and this is the movie he's wanted to make his whole life. So to be a part of that, he was one of my directors that introduced me to sci-fi. So even to sit on a table next to him, I was like. Are you sure you meant to call me? Because I don't know. <laughs> Maybe got the wrong. You sure you meant to call me? That's Essie and I. Definitely. Uh, let's see. Go on through it again. Person, but Did you ask him that? Was he sure? Did I, 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 when you? my agent said to me, Luke, but someone wants to meet you, I'm like, are you sure? How does that happen? Because he approached me. Are you sure? That's a FITE statement. Uh, having an emotional reaction as a result of the status and that consideration. Uh, definitely going to go for... Um, I'm going to keep looking again. Ben, which I thought was very strange. There was no kind of tape or casting. It was just like he sat down, had breakfast. Yes, <laughs> I have transitioned into my INTJ shadow because I can smell railguns cooking coming through the door, like right over here on the other side of this camera. Uh, and then like, oh, so nice. I think she's making tacos tonight, or as we like to say, tacos. We call them tacos because like, you know, Americans from California. Just saying. What's going on? You're like, what's breakfast? <laughs> what is that? I think it's after dinner. Yeah. That <laughs> way after dinner. That's that a Bloody Mary. That's yeah. really ex That's an S E N I statement talking about a lack of self discipline, uh, et cetera, as a result. Uh, yeah, I got that whisper, huh? Um, definitely, uh, I'm going to say control. Uh, not really seeing her freak out. While she is very animated, uh, she kind of seems. Uh, a lot more stoic and very outcome focused with what she's saying. Definitely systematic. Hasn't really made any interest statements. Not seeing affiliative at all. Um, so let's keep going. Exciting though. I mean, he's great because the thing I like about his films are that he always puts females in the lead and he makes them badasses. You know, he really has what women are. Obviously, they are so strong and so powerful. And in the movie, it, it's he always makes men and women equal. But because in movies right now. You always see the man as the, you know, the protagonist, the leader. And in this movie, they work together. They, they need each other. And that's the point. It, it shows relationship to what they, they really are. Which is a good way to explain exactly what's going on in the world now. Because everyone wants to talk about female empowerment, women empowerment. Yeah. Women. It's not about women taking over the world. It's about women being treated equally. Being treated equally. <laughs> right? Do you agree with that? Okay. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's about women being appreciated and being allowed the space and freedom to talk. Uh, the space and freedom to talk. Yeah, because they want to have their voice. It's a TE statement. Uh, so yeah, uh, she is definitely an ENTJ. There you guys go. ENTJ. Pragmatic, systematic, NT, direct initiating control, in charge type, ENTJ. We already know she's SENI, TEFI. So she is an ENTJ. Awesome. And great. We are at the end of our 60 minutes. Thank you all for coming. Uh, very much appreciate uh, everyone here. Uh, had a lot of fun uh, with this particular episode. Yes, I was, had no co-host tonight, but that's okay. Doesn't mean we can necessarily uh, do it by ourselves. Um, that being said, uh, look for the uh, Patreon Q&A as well as an actual Q&A coming up in the very near future that's gonna be scheduled. So keep an eye on Patreon as well. We're releasing some additional lectures that we'll uh, have coming out. Uh, lecture content. Uh, we have about to drop uh, season 21 episode, uh, which is like filmed like, like it's like right there on the board. Uh, season 21, I think it's like episode 15. And I think that's how to social engineer ISFPs. That's about to drop. Uh, so look for that as well. Uh, we have another Patreon private lecture due out this Friday. And uh, we also, and I think that's going to be another episode in season 19. And I think we also have another episode dropping inside of email. So we're going to be emailing some lectures that you can only get through email. If you don't have it, go to csjoseph.life, wait 30 seconds. When the pop-up shows up, put in your email uh, call to action. So you can get on our email list so you guys can receive those private lectures. Season 22 is only available through email. And uh, you're definitely going to want to get there uh, to get that. And I think it's going to be, uh, we're doing lectures on cognitive transitions. So yeah, I am back, uh, back from Dallas, and the summer is starting to winding down, so uh, glad to be back and be producing content again, and hopefully I will avoid uh, additional uh, 
injuries as I continue to uh, injure myself and hopefully I can stay healthy enough to keep producing awesome, um, uh, you know, uh, content. So uh, anyway, and uh, Mr. A Plethora of Me, actually, uh, I had said it uh, multiple times uh, throughout the show, probably like on average of like, I don't know, every 20 minutes or so, uh, providing additional warnings and whatnot. So perhaps you showed up to the show uh, midway through before that happened. Um, I appreciate your donation. Uh, next time, I'll do my best uh, to uh, keep track of... Um, um, like where we currently are, although I think I did mention where we currently were from a super chat point of view. Uh, maybe we'll just add like a super chat widget so we can kind of see like what the current high one is. We'll see about uh, getting that adjusted just so that uh, the audience stays informed as to what that is. Uh, so anyway, uh, thank you folks. Uh, we might get to uh, that name next week anyhow, so we'll see what happens. Um, but anyway, thank you folks. Thank you for coming. Uh, it's great to see 150 people on tonight and um, I uh, love you all, and thank you for keeping the movement and the community alive. Uh, that being said, we'll see you guys next time. Have a good night.